Hi, in this video you're going to learn about different data blending techniques available on the Altrix platform. In today's day and age, data is becoming more and more readily available across a multitude of different file sources. Data analysts need to be able to work with these variety of different data sources to bring them together for analytical purposes. Altrix really helps business analysts perform these tasks. In this session, you're going to learn how to blend multiple disparate data sources into one stream, and along the way, how to use and configure the join, the spatial match, and the find nearest tools. In order to show you some of the data blending capabilities inside of the Altrix platform, I thought it would be best to build out a visual workflow. In order to start that visual workflow creation, I'm simply going to go to my input output tools and click and drag onto the canvas the input data tool. I'm going to go ahead and navigate out to my file system where I'll consume into the application a series of customers. These customer records indicate the customer ID and the associated store where they're making purchases, as well as some address level detail, and most importantly a spatial object or a point representing the physical location of those customers on the ground. In parallel, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag onto the canvas another input tool. At this point, I'm going to navigate back out to the file system and we're going to consume into the application a series of zip codes contained in an Esri shape file uh, directly into the platform. So we'll go ahead and double click on the zip codes.shp and we'll see a series of zip codes as well as some key statistics as well as a polygon spatial object describing those zip codes. At this point I'd like to relate the two different files together or blend them together based off of a proximity analysis. In this case I'd like to understand which customers fall within what zip codes. In order to do so, I'm going to gain access to some of my spatial tools, in particular a spatial matching tool, to blend the data. I'm simply going to go to the spatial tool category, access my spatial match tool, and click and drag that directly onto the canvas. I'm going to stream my customers directly into the target connector of the spatial match tool, and my zip codes into the universe connector for the spatial match tool, and configure the tool. At this point, we're going to say we're going to want to isolate all customers that are within my zip code. Beneath there, we're presented with a field mapping interface where we can choose which fields of information to carry down. At this point, I'm simply going to uncheck the zip code spatial object because I will no longer need it for analytics. The result of this, we'll actually go ahead and create a browse for it so we can see the appended data. In this case, we'll see those customer records, and as I scroll out over to the right, we'll begin to see some of the disclosed zip code information and statistical detail about average age, income, etc. At this point in the visual workflow process, I'd like to introduce a third source of data. If I go back to my input output functionality, I can click and drag onto the canvas another input data tool. It's here I can navigate out to a file system to consume into the application a series of transactions for those customers that are contained inside of an XML document. Again, the nice thing about Altrix when working with XML is that it will build out a nice wide file for analytics. Since this is a text-based file, what I'd like to do first before I blend it with my customer records is reformat some of the fields contained in the data source. In order to do so, I'm going to go into the data preparation tools where I'll click and drag onto the canvas to select tool. It's through here that I'm just going to simply transform my customer ID into an integer. The reason for doing this is because the customer ID that is appended to my customer object is formatted to be a double. And in order to blend data based off of a common identifier, they must have the same field types. New numbers match to numbers, strings match to strings. Now that I've reformatted my transaction-based data, I can go into some of my join tools to blend the two disparate streams of data together. In order to do so, I can click and drag directly onto the canvas a join tool. I can stream the information or the matched records for my zip codes and customers directly into the join tool, as well as the details from my transaction file. Through the join tool, I can establish a relationship between the two streams either by record position or by common field types that they have between the two sources. In this case, where the customer ID matches the customer underscore ID. Again, I'm presented with a field mapping interface detailing which fields of information I'm going to carry down for analytics. The result of this process will be an inner join result coming out of the middle. 
any records that do not match from our customer file uh, upstream will fall out to the left, and any records from our transaction stream that do not match will fall out to the right. In this case here, I'm going to append or place onto the canvas three different browse tools to show you some of the results. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Run Module button again to reprocess, and at the end we can see a few different things. The first thing that we're going to notice is that the output of the left outer join is going to contain zero records. This means that all customers have an associated transaction on the right hand side. The results in the middle are going to be what has actually merged between the two sources of information. So again, I see my customer store information. If I scroll out further, I'm going to begin to see some of the zip code level detail. Uh, in terms of some of the statistics we appended from the initial spatial match. And then what we're going to see is some additional information from the transaction file. Last but not least, we can look at the fallout from the transaction file. In this example, we see that 773 records did not have an associated match in the customer file. If we wanted to create an right outer join result of the unmatched records from the transaction along with our inner join, what we could do is leverage a union tool to re-blend those two streams of data. But rather than doing that, what we're going to do is introduce a fourth data set into the stream because we'd like to identify the nearest store to all of these customers. In order to do so, what I'm going to do is go back to my input output tool set. I'll click and drag onto the canvas another input data tool. We're going to navigate back out to the file system and we'll consume into the application a series of stores that these customers have visited. In order to determine the nearest store to each customer, we're going to leverage an, an additional spatial tool. In this case here, we'll go back to the spatial tool category and we'll click and drag onto the canvas of find nearest tool. This will help us re-blend our customer stream of data and our store stream of data to determine the nearest store to each customer. The way we're going to configure this is we're going to stream our customer or joint customer records directly into the target of the Find Nearest tool, and we'll stream our store file directly into the universe of our Find Nearest tool. Through here and inside of the configuration window, we're going to find the nearest store to each target uh, customer. We're going to find one store, and we're going to set a maximum distance of 20 miles, meaning that if the store is greater than 20 miles and it's the nearest to a customer, it will report a value of null. In this example here, we'll go ahead and rebrowse the result sets so we can see the appended data. Go ahead and run it and we can see our reblended data. Again, as we walk through this, we'll begin to see our customer data from our original source, our zip code data coming from our uh, spatial match process. We'll see our transaction data coming from our join tool process. And then all the way at the end, we're going to see our associated store-based information and the associated nearest store and the distance in miles for how far it resides. This concludes our data blending example, leveraging the Altrix platform. Thank you.